Hi, so what I thought would be interesting would be to go over the undergraduate grades that I got and let's start with the first semester. So the first class listed here is ASU 101. This is a class that is basically going over some of the things that are offered at Arizona State University, such as what libraries are available, what kind of services there are, what kind of tutoring services there are. It's just a basic class about how Arizona State University works. It's just a one credit class. There isn't a huge amount of work associated with it. There isn't a whole lot of learning that you take from this other than just knowing how the university works. The next class is one of the beginner classes in computer science, mainly principles of programming. So this class is getting the basic idea of how programming works, which is the fundamentals of how the computer science degree is gonna go from there. I actually worked with the instructor here several times after this class, mainly for teaching assistant type things, grader type things, and actually some other things too. So it was really nice getting to know her. I didn't really use any office hours during my undergrad at all, so I didn't really get to talk to her then, but I did talk to her much afterwards. It was a great working relationship that we had. First year composition, I don't remember a whole lot about this. It's a class that is just intro writing in some sense. You're gonna be writing a few essays. I think I wrote three or something and it was like 20 pages total. It wasn't a whole lot of work. And I think it was about trying to write in some kind of argumentative fashion. So if you had some particular topic you wanted to talk about, you tried to argue your position and try to defend it, whether even if it was not totally correct, as long as you can defend your position, that is what the class is about. Intro engineering, I actually taught this class twice, which is really cool. It's kind of like CSE 110 in that you program things, but this is more applied in the sense that you're gonna be working with Lego robots and some of the things that you got to do were to have teams of students compete against each other in a sumo ring. So they design their own robots with their own strategies and then compete together. I actually have videos on one of my other channels dedicated to all of the matches in my classes. It's a really fun class. The human event is kind of like the English class, but more on the literature side. So English 101 here is about the writing aspect and the human event is more on the literature and writing aspect. So you read a whole bunch of different texts and you try to defend your positions on them. I didn't really like this class that much because that's just not the way that I think many other people did, but it's just a class that you had to do in order to get the honors degree. It was, it was totally required. And Calc 3, I tested out of Calc 1 and 2 because I took AP Calc, AB and BC. And this is the class that I was put into because I scored so highly on the math test. And it was a great fit. I enjoyed it, although I don't really use it very much because my field doesn't really use calculus all that much, although it does sometimes. But nevertheless, I really like math type things, so I enjoyed the class. On to spring 2012. So the first class here is Bio 181. This is a, in some sense, required class. You didn't have to take Bio, but you had to take some kind of science-y class. And this is just the one that I happened to pick. It was just general biology, nothing totally special. It was a lecture hall of literally like 400 people. CSC 205, that is the second course in programming. It's again with the same instructor. I really enjoyed her teaching and this is where I started to get to know her a bit more and we started to develop a working relationship. I actually took up my first programming job during this class. So if any of you are computer science students and you want to get started in an introductory programming job. I actually got a job on campus, which is based on web development for the Arizona State webpage, which is pretty dang cool. I got to lay out various things, do some HTML coding and all that kind of thing. So this is more advanced programming. It's not quite to the truly cool stuff, but it's enough to where you can have a really solid foundation to take on the next classes in the curriculum. English 102, I don't remember a whole lot about this one in particular either. There are just some classes I just don't remember. I believe it was more of the same thing with English 101. There is an advanced version of English at Arizona State. I just happened to not know about it at the time. I probably could have taken it, but I'm not 100% sure about that. This seems just to be more of the same argumentative writing thing, which is obviously an important skill to have. And there is, of course, a second honors 
human event, and of course I didn't like this one as much. In fact, this is the only B that I've ever gotten in any class, so sorry about that. I, I just have to be truthful. Discrete math, I didn't realize it at the time, but this is actually one of the most important classes I've ever taken because it's the foundation for a lot of computer science classes down the line. I don't remember a whole lot about the class in particular, but I used the class material all the time. On to fall 2012. So this is one of the most interesting semesters I've ever had. So CSE 120, which is basic logical programming, digital programming, where you actually build some basic circuits and then test them. I had an experience where I needed to show a final project to a TA and I had two hours to do it. I got it done in roughly 15 minutes, but for some reason it didn't work, especially when the TA came over to check if it works. But when the TA goes away, it works right then. And then I had to tweak it over and over and over in order to get it to work. The TA kept coming back and it kept not working. One minute before the two hours were up, the TA came over for the last time and it worked. I was so relieved about that. I enjoyed the class quite a bit. Human sexuality, I may talk about this at some later point because it deserves its own video, but suffice it to say, Hurricane Sandy was the only reason I got an A+. I would have gotten an A otherwise. If you wanna hear more about that, please put it into the comments down below. I'll make a video about it. Probability and Stats Engineering, IEEE 380. This was actually a pretty cool class. It was a somewhat large lecture hall. The teacher was very good because she's taught it many, many times. It was an enjoyable class. And I use probability and statistic type things all the time in my area. I enjoyed it and it was very, very useful to me. Applied linear algebra. I don't use linear algebra that often, although it is used a lot in my area. I took the honors version of the class because I needed a certain number of honors credits beyond the human event in order to graduate with honors. But I actually enjoyed this class quite a bit because it goes more into the theoretical side of linear algebra and we got to implement some things and we got to see how certain concepts work such as like eigenvalues and, and linear transformations and all that fun stuff. I really enjoyed the class. Physics 1. So this was actually also an honors class. I took a lot of honors classes this fall and I enjoyed this one a lot because the teacher was very eccentric and it was a very deep dive into physics one. It was very difficult. I will not say that this was easy. This was one of the hardest classes I took in undergrad, but I enjoyed it immensely. On the spring 2013, so CSE 230 was about low level types of programming. So we implemented things not in assembly code, but something like it. I don't remember exactly the name of it, but it was pseudo assembly, but getting the basic of idea of, of the low level architecture of, of how computers work. I don't really use that very much because I'm more of a high level theory type person, but it was a very interesting class nonetheless. CSE 240, I actually teach something along these lines right now, which is an introduction to programming languages in different types of programming paradigms. I don't remember too much about this one. I enjoyed some of the concepts in it, but I don't remember much about the actual class itself. The FSC 294 was a requirement that I needed to take in order to be an undergrad TA. So that teacher I mentioned earlier, where I was a teaching assistant, this is the semester where the first one occurred. I also did another teaching assistantship with her in a later semester. And then on to physics two. This was even a higher step above physics one in terms of difficulty. In terms of the concepts, it goes way up from physics one, but in terms of the raw workload, it was roughly the same. So it was definitely probably the hardest class I took in undergrad because it's not something that you really have an intuitive sense for until you start thinking about the material quite a bit. Not much material in physics other than Newtonian mechanics. You can get a nice intuitive sense right off the bat. You have to play around with things quite a bit. And the same thing is true of theoretical computer science, but and we're going to see that in a second. Religious 100. This was a humanities class that I had to take. I didn't have to take this one specifically, but I had to take some amount of humanities. I don't remember too much about it, but it was just a basic intro to religions, if I remember correctly. On the fall 2013, so we have data structures and algorithms. This is a very, very useful class, and I didn't enjoy the class as much but I needed all of the things that I learned in there. One of the reasons I didn't like it as much is that we didn't get to go in depth as much as I wanted to. There are some topics that are usually taught in this type of class, but just weren't for, I don't know the reasons why, but they just weren't. But all of the things 
in it, such as data structures, basic data structures, and algorithms, such as graph search, I use all the time. They are incredibly useful to any computer science student. So if you're a computer science student, this is the class that is very important, or at least one of them that is very important. On to intro to software engineering. I don't remember much about the lecture specifically, but I do remember having to team up with some number of other people and implement some relatively large software project. And I think it was like some kind of flight booking service. It was terrible, but we got to implement something that is relatively big. And we got to learn about all the different types of software development methodologies, such as waterfall and agile and all that kind of thing. That type of stuff is really useful if you're working on a team. I don't really work on a team of software developers very much, so I don't get to apply this as much, but it is nonetheless a very important topic. CSC 394, this is actually one of the more important classes, even though it was only one credit hour. So the class is about C++ and all of the cool advanced features that you can use in C++. I actually used those when I taught C++ at ASU several times. And I actually even gave a talk at a C++ conference after knowing some of these things and having taught them. So I would highly, highly recommend if you have a practicum or some special topics type class, please take a class like that. It is very, very useful. Advanced linear algebra. I think this is the hardest class of the entire undergrad curriculum. <laughs> well, at least for me. So this class is basically a step up from the applied linear algebra, which doesn't have any applied anything in it and goes into all of the theoretical aspects of linear algebra. And we got to talk about different types of transformations and different types of theorems that you prove, different types of vector spaces. It goes way into depth. I did enjoy the class quite a bit, even though it kind of kicked my butt. I did end up with a relatively high grade as a result. I did get a high grade and everything, sorry but it did kick my butt. I had to really work for that A there. I actually enjoyed this Music 394 class, which is basically chamber music. Even if you're not a major in music, you get to play your instrument in a small chamber ensemble with other non-majors. It's a little bit of a time investment, but the payoff is really nice because you get to form connections and perform really cool pieces. And I enjoyed that one. Women, Gender, and Society. This was, again, another humanities that I happened to take. It was a required humanities, and this is the one I picked. I don't remember too much about it because it was an online class. There are several events that I had to go to. I don't remember too much about it, sadly. On to spring 2014. This is the hardest semester in total. So principles of programming languages is where we had to implement an entire compiler. One interesting story is that I had this big long assignment that I had to do where it was roughly a thousand lines of code, I think like 1400 or something. And the way that it was set up that I implemented the thing and it was only slightly off from what it needed to be, but it was so much work that you had to refix it that I just started over and then it happened again. And again, this kicked my butt, not in terms of the concepts, but the amount of time that was invested in actually implementing the assignment. I don't remember too much about the lecture specifically. I do remember that this class kicked my butt in terms of the workload that was needed. All right, my favorite class of all time, CSC 355. This is Intro Theoretical Computer Science. It kicks the butt of pretty much every computer science student out there. I enjoyed the class immensely because I love theory and math type things and I've taught it five times as the recording of this video, and it's gonna just keep going up as the years go on. The professor was fantastic, and I loved how he taught. The material was super cool. I very, very, very much enjoyed this class. Advanced object-oriented principles. I don't remember too much about this class, unfortunately. There wasn't anything remarkable that I remember from the lectures, and none of the assignments were really that applicable in the sense that I use them or that they're used by developers today because developers have mostly abandoned these kind of things in Java, but I enjoy anything that goes into the technical aspects of a programming language, which this did. MAT 494, so there, this is gonna be a series of four math classes that I took, which are basically problem solving seminars, where you have to solve a particular set of hard problems that are using different various techniques, and the seminar is just talking about various types of techniques. So I actually was able to take this class four times and it counts for a math credit, which is why I got a math minor, but I enjoyed this class quite a bit. Probability, this also kicked my butt. And this goes from the very intro stuff of probability, but it goes into the really deep aspects of probability theory too. 
This class really kicked my butt. I was so close to an A plus in this class, but I just happened to not get an A plus. If I happened to get an A plus, then I would get a straight A plus on every single class this semester, but this one happened to ruin it. I did get an A plus in every single class in a graduate semester, but not an undergrad. This is the closest that I got. All right, fall 2014. This first class, CSE 485, is going to continue with CSE 486 in the spring. It's a two semester type class. A lot of us were put into a single group and the objective was that we needed to implement some type of real world project for an advisor over the course of a year. I'm actually advising in my current institution such a project right now, which is pretty dang cool. But back when I was a student, this was actually pretty interesting in that we were had to, having to work on this huge project, like tens of thousands of lines of code, in order to implement something that a real researcher would use. I don't remember exactly what it is, but it's something to do with some astronomy array type things. It was actually pretty interesting and something way outside of the things that I do on a daily basis now but it was a fun project nonetheless. CSE 492, and this will also continue with 493 in the spring, which was my honors thesis project. And this project was about analyzing sea ice concentrations in the Arctic Ocean. And this was actually a very cool project because I got to work by myself. I love working on my own projects and having to think by myself instead of having to rely on other people. Although that's not necessarily a bad thing, it's just how the way I work. But I love this project because it uses a lot of big data type things and you had to try to optimize various things. It was very cool. Mobile app development. This was a very cool class by one of my friends now. This was so useful that we got to learn how to implement and program iOS apps. And we got to get to the point where we could, if we wanted to submit something to the app store, which is pretty cool. One interesting aspect of this is that after this semester in the summer, what I was able to do was to work with this instructor and co-organize with him a summer camp for high schoolers to implement iPhone apps, which is pretty dang cool. And we, and we got to do that for several summers and that was pretty fun. Religions 203, Saints, Sacred Bio. I, again, this is another humanities class. I don't remember too much about it. Again, it was another online class. In the final semester of undergrad, I was in the four plus one program at this point which means that you could finish your master's in one year after your undergrad. And the way you can do that is you can take grad classes in your undergrad. In my senior year, especially this semester, I took two grad classes. And those are the ones that have 500 after them. So 486 and 493, they just continued from the previous semester. CC 555, Theory of Computation. This kicked my butt, but I enjoyed it a lot. It's not the hardest class I took, but it gets really, really deep into some of the theory type things that I use all the time. I love this class. And this instructor happened to be my PhD advisor, which is probably where everything started in this particular class, which is awesome. CC 598, Distributed Software Development. This is actually pretty interesting because the instructor here happens to be the actual supervisor of that summer camp I was talking about for high schoolers, which was an interesting relationship that we had, but it was nonetheless an interesting class about how software is actually implemented and try to work things in a distributed way. So like if I have a bunch of processors in my computer, how do I distribute the workload? Or if I have a bunch of computers on my network, how do I distribute the workload of the problem that I need to solve? It was pretty interesting. And this semester also, I was in FSC 201. It was 294 before, but it changed. Where I was an undergrad TA for that instructor I told you about earlier. And so those are my grades. I am notably a high achiever because I really, really want to get that A and to do well and to learn a lot. And some people just don't think that way and that's totally fine, but this is the way that I operate. Hopefully this doesn't discourage you too much. It's not about getting an A that's important. The important thing is trying to understand new things and try to learn things from people. We're all reflections of each other. We can learn a lot from each other. So hopefully that was interesting. Leave thoughts about my grades into the comments down below. If you wanna learn about my graduate level grades and you wanna see a video like that, put it into the comments down below also. As always, please like the video and subscribe to the channel. It really helps us out. There are many other links in the video description if you wanna support the channel further. And as always, thanks for watching and I'll see you next time.